Hello and welcome to day 16 of my Advent of Code series for the year 2020. So if you've missed any of the previous episodes and you want to check those out, check out the playlist linked right up there and be sure to get subscribed to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos. So today's problem is called ticket translation uh, and pretty much what happens is we need to decipher this ticket that we have for one of the legs of our journey which is a plane trip except for we don't speak the language on the ticket so we only know the number values and we don't actually know what the fields are called. Um, so the way that we're going to determine how we're going to use our ticket. Uh, for part one, we are going to read in all of these rules which pertain to different things that may be on our ticket. Uh, and we are going to go ahead and use all of the nearby tickets by us to find, uh, first we're going to weed out all of the completely invalid tickets um, from the tickets that are around us so that we know which tickets we can use to actually determine which ones, uh, which fields our different values correspond to. So to do this, we are going to go ahead and say that an invalid field is one that can't possibly fit in any of the ranges that were listed. And then we need to return a sum of all of the numbers that don't fit into any of those ranges. Um, so then we need to just return that. So I highly recommend you go ahead and give this a try and we'll jump into my code right about now. So I focused a lot on the pre-processing here. So in our read in function, I'm first splitting it down into three sections by double new lines, uh, which you'll see is the rules and then our ticket and then the nearby tickets. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I'm splitting those down further, uh, each of those lists by each line. And then what I'm doing is I'm returning a triplet here, which will break down. I'll start with the last two parts because they're simpler. Uh, the second part is just going to be our ticket uh, represented as a list of integers. And the third part is just going to be a list of essentially lists of tickets, uh, which are just going to be lists of lists of integers. Um, so then what we have here, this read rule thing here, uh, ends up being a dictionary where I am mapping what this is, is the name of the rule uh, to all of the possible numbers that this rule covers. Um, so how we're doing that is in this read rule function right here. First, I split it uh, into the name and the values, and then I go further and on the values, I go ahead and split those into the different ranges. Uh, so this is going to give me two doubles of numbers. Then I convert all of those to integers. Uh, then I create a set from the range of the first ones. Uh, and since the range is supposed to be inclusive, I add one. And then I add to that the range of the second pair of numbers uh, the same way as a set. And then we go ahead and return those two. And then we end up returning those as a dictionary. So then I have this little helper function here, here called valid for any. Um, so what this does is this just returns a set of all of the possible valid numbers uh, between any of the rules, uh, which is super useful for part one. So then what we're doing in part one is we're going ahead and saying that valid is going to be equal to valid for any uh, for our rules.values, because if you remember our rules is a dictionary where the key is the names. Uh, so then what we have is invalid found. So this is going to be our list of actual numbers that are not valid. Uh, and what we are going to do is just loop through every single value and every single ticket. If it's not invalid, which is our list of every possible valid value, we add it to invalid values. And then at the end, we just return the sum of invalid found. And then we can jump into part two. So part two is what you would expect from this problem. We are going to need to determine which field is which. And we're going to essentially just, I mean, yeah, and then at the end, we need to return uh, the uh, the product of all of the fields that start with the word departure. Um, so it works through an example here. I highly recommend you go ahead and give this try for yourself, and we'll jump back into my code right now. Okay, so the first thing that I did here is I wrote an is valid function, uh, which this is just going to return whether a specific ticket is valid uh, using a sort of similar method to the first one. So overall is going to be our valid for any set, which uses that same function that we saw above. Uh, and then that gets passed into invalid on each call. So what I'm doing here first is I am initializing a dictionary here called call to rule. So this is essentially a mapping of our different columns to our specific rules, uh, where this is saying for each column, which is going to be represented by an index here, uh, which is I, just going to be a number. Uh, these are all of the rules that are possible to be valid for this column. So then what we're doing is I'm looping through the tickets. Uh, if the ticket is valid, then I go ahead and check it. If it's not, then I don't bother with it at all. And what I do here is I enumerate through every single value in the ticket. 
And on each of those values, I go ahead and iterate through every single rule. And if the uh, value of the item in the ticket is not invalid, which is going to be the set of all of the valid numbers for each rule, then I go ahead and remove that rule from call to rule. So then once we do that, we will have every single rule that is possible to be true for every single value. And we can build our final definitive end to rule uh, list right here. So this is going to hold really what rule is at which index. So the way that I'm doing this is I'm going ahead and I am sorting call to rule, which is a dictionary, and I'm doing that based off of call to rule dot get. So if sorting here based off of dot get, what this is going to do is essentially return a list of the different keys in call to rule. Um, by the sort function that we uh, specify here in our key. So since we're doing dot get, this is going to give us each of the sets that are here and the implicit ordering for uh, different sets. If you are uh, going ahead and sorting a list of sets, it's going to sort it based off of their length. So this is going to get us uh, a list where we have the shortest thing at the start and we go on like that. So then what we go ahead and do is I set rule to a list of call to rule, which is our dictionary before, minus set of end to rule. So end to rule here is going to hold all of our key values. And what is happening here when we subtract uh, a set from a dictionary is it's going to remove all of the values uh, from this list right here that are already spoken for here essentially. So all of the places where uh, call to rule has a specific value, it's just going to go ahead and get rid of those, uh, the ones that we have already specified in int to rule. And we're just going to get the first element of that set and we're gonna apply that to uh, rule and that is just going to go into our int to rule sub j. Uh, so this can actually just be simplified. I don't know why I did this in two steps. Um, so just to break this down a little bit, the reason this works is because for this problem to be solvable at all, we know that at every step there has to be some rule that only has one possible outcome. Uh, so if we are sorting based off of the length, that means we're going to get the shortest length each time. And what we can go ahead and do is then we can just say, for each of these, uh, as we go ahead and speak for each rule, uh, we can go ahead and remove that from all the other possibilities. And then there still has to be another thing that is going to go ahead and be the shortest in the list with only one. So if we iterate through this, we're going to end up assigning every single rule to an index and it's going to be correct. So then what I'm doing is our final thing just to get our answer. I am initializing an answer variable here at one. And then what I'm doing is I'm looping through hours, which is our uh, ticket. And then I'm checking if int to rule sub i, so that's going to be the rule that is at each index uh, in our ticket. If it starts with departure, then I'm multiplying uh, answer by that value, and that goes ahead and it gives us our final solution. So we can go ahead and return that, and there we go. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and get subscribed to me and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos, and I will see you in the next 